I truly believe in, in the kind of museums that we are, this notion of the encyclopedic museum or the global museum or a museum that tries or attempts to collect, reflect history and the world at the same time. I'm Julian Sugasagoitia, the director and CEO of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. If you think of the museum, it's just a way of framing creativity. Creativity has always existed, yet museums have not always existed. So artistry today, because of the enlightenment encyclopedia, the way of thinking that by collecting different samples, putting them together in a wall, you'll study, you learn, you derive a lot of knowledge. So we're really based on this kind of encyclopedic model. And, and some of the works of art that people come to see, so in the Western galleries, for instance, definitely the Caravaggio, the St. John the Baptist is, is one that a lot of people revered. And it is one of the very few Caravaggios in America and one of the greatest. So that is, again, a destination for us. In the Impressionist galleries, we have the big uh, Monet water lilies that for many people, it's also one of their favorite works of art. Today, the Impressionist galleries have been refurbished thanks to the addition of uh, Henry Block's collection and the repurposing of redoing a lot of those rooms to enhance and incorporate the two collections, the our existing collection plus Henry's gift. And there you have, uh, for instance, uh, Gauguin, who's highly also always requested or demanded, or Boulevard des Capucines, which is one of like the first Impressionist paintings, you know, so with Impression Soleil Levant. The other one is Boulevard de Capucine, and Boulevard de Capucine was painted from Nadar studio, which held then the first Impressionist exhibition. So it's again, one of those iconic pieces. But I could go on and on and on with every one of our collections, whether it's the American collection or, or the Native American collection. The Chinese collection has also incredible paintings. So there's some galleries that have fluctuated or changed very little since their inception in the 1930s. One would be the Chinese Temple Room. It was created early on because we had already uh, scholars and actually the, the first directors were passionate studiers of Asian art. And that's why also perhaps we have a, one of the top Asian collections in the world. And the Guanin, which is like the center heart, along with a wonderful mural painting behind, and then some elements, that, that centers a whole gallery and that has not changed a lot since the inception of the museum. At a time in which people in the 30s, travel was very difficult and, and you know, the jet age comes much later. So think of trying to use the museum as a way of trying to give to a local community a sense of what traveling the world would have been. And in particular, the, the story of our Guanin is, again, those kind of uh, almost Indiana Jones accounts when, when Larry Sickman, who was first a curator of Asian art and then the director of this institution and one, of, again, of those heroes celebrated by Monuments Men. He was one of those Monuments Men in, during the war. But when he accounts how he finds this, it's, it's, it's a piece that is discarded, that is on the snow, that, that he begs if he can see it and then acquires it for the museum. But it is almost like he's saving uh, a, a, an object that was just left to, to abandon. Then with care and conservation, it is just a wonderful balanced piece and the expression of this guanin that is supposed to, to give you a sense of both inner peace and also balance and, and, and balance in the world. I think if you're in front of it, you will feel it very well. So I think that's also why people say it's one of the greatest, is because I guess you are moved into a lot of serenity when you're, you're, you're seeing this piece, which then accomplishes what I think it was meant to be. One of the signature pieces for, for the Nelson Atkins, but I would say also for, for the entire region, and, and, and it is now a, a signifier of Kansas City, is the shuttle courts that we have uh, on our campus by Klaus Oldenburg. He imagined our classical building being like the net of a giant game of uh, badminton, and so we have some shuttle corks in our campus. Uh, that becomes today the signifier. It, it was not without controversy when it was first installed in the 90s, and today is fully embraced as an icon. 
So that tells you also the evolution also of what people saw as art. So pop art might have been controversial so many years ago, but today it is seen like, uh, I tell you, a, a total icon for the city of Kansas City and a signifier for the museum. Mm -hmm.